Hey, welcome to another episode of Coffee and Hema with me, Jamie McKeever. Uh, this video is response to a request, uh, but it's a follow up to a video I made a long time ago on the concept of relative advantage, um, which is uh, I'll link link below. But it's um, a concept I use to understand how to approach uh, kind of tactical situations in fencing, and essentially the point is that the, you need to identify not just what you're good at. Um, or your best at, but the thing is best against the person that you're fencing against, right? So it, it might be that, uh, that that I'm only okay at grappling, but they're shit. Uh, so even though I'm better at fencing at range, going to grapple is a good option for me. So that's what relative advantage means. The question I was asked is, how do you how do you train that? How do you train being good at reading a situation, uh, coming up with a plan of action, and applying whatever it happens to be, right? Um, and it is it is tricky to train, right? You really cannot train it in any kind of traditional drill format. Um, uh, and all the things that I've done to train that uh, are either in um, kind of what I would consider sparring games, uh, or so sp sparring games is kind of one category. I'll come back to the distinction I'm about to make. Another is sort of is restricted sparring, so sparring with with a goal, with a set and formal goal. And also just things you can do differently in your sparring uh, to try and train that, uh, whether there's any kind of formal drills for it or not. Um, and uh, sparring games, I think, are probably the closest thing to a drill for this because you can create asymmetric sparring games where there are different winning conditions for both fences. Um, and essentially those are training doing a relative advantage uh, a match, right? Now, they have a fixed advantage to find so what one example that i've played before that i quite enjoy is that um either fencer can hit can hit right and win from a, a normal hit um one fencer um wins if they get to grapple don't have to do anything there if they get to the grapple they've won uh the other fencer wins in a, in a double situation right so you've got one person has to fence cleanly and has to get security to a grapple situation, the other fencer just has to hit to win, right? Um, and you know, essentially, what you've done there is you've given one person's advantage at range and one person's advantage at close distance, right? Um, you can create lots of different kind of asymmetric sparring games like this, where uh, in in those cases, what you'll be drilling is uh, once you've already identified what your relative advantage is, how do you do a thing to take advantage of that, right? Um, you know, while this doesn't train the grapple actions, if you had a grapple action, right, you've got to grapple now, now you can do it. Um, and they're fun, they're great things to train, the, to use in general, uh, to try and embed concepts, to try and make sure people can, can, can pull them out. Um, the, you know, the problem, especially with something like grappling, is that they, it doesn't come up in context in free sparring with every exchange, right? At this time, it, you know, you're actively seeking the context of, of grappling in every exchange, it doesn't mean that it's more likely to come up. Um, the next kind of level of formality beyond that that I mentioned is sort of restricted sparring. And what do I mean by that? Um, I mean that uh, you have been given very explicit instructions. It's, it's free sparring in normal context. You might have scoring if you want, right? So it might be kind of more, more score and, and tournament focused. But it's free sparring for whatever, or, or tournament, whichever you want. But you're not, your instructions are not just go in and do it but actually to do something specific, right? Um, in Vardy, uh, I have an exercise taken straight from Vardy for this. He's got the, the Senyo, it's called, uh, by Martin Hemus, not by Vardy himself. That has, each body part has a, a symbol and an animal and a little description, and the description is not really about that body part, but about some, some component of fencing, right? Some principle, some style of fencing, right? Um, and the exercise I have for this one is that everybody picks out one of these pieces from a from a hat, right? Everybody's got their own secret little thing that they read, the card that has this particular thing on, and their task is to fence like that, right? And you have two things you got to do in this task. One is you've got to fence like that, and you've got to work out what your opponent is doing, right? Um, and come up with a plan that means you've worked out what they're doing, you worked out you've got what the thing that you're doing, and how to match the two to succeed in inspiring. Right. Um, it doesn't have to be the, the senior version of that. It could be anything. Right. It could be you know the hat. The thing might say you want to be you want to be grappling. The thing might say you want to keep it at wide distance. 
Uh, you can do it in kind of whatever level of detail or whatever you, things, uh, components you think useful. Um, that is now training both things, right? That's both training, adapting. Well, the first thing is training is the reading of the opponent, right? Because you're trying to work out what they're trying to do explicitly, right? Um, they're not allowed to change. So, you know, in, in real sparring, they might be doing a thing and they might do something else, right? At least at this time, they're kind of stuck with it. So you, you will eventually, hopefully, get to a conclusion or not, right? But at least you're, you're practicing that. Uh, it also practices um, getting you out of your comfort zone because you're going to be up defending in a particular way. And that's another important part with the concept of relative advantage. You need to be able to not just do the thing that you're good at, but do something something else, right? And, and this is forcing you on that aspect to it. And of course, it's training, combining the two, and trying to fence in a particular way, but also adapting the specifics of that to the tactical situation that you're in. I really love those. We should do more of them, actually. I haven't done one in a while. Um, I find them really useful, really fun kind of classes uh, for people to do. And it really gets people thinking uh, about their fencing more than just kind of doing it. Which brings me to the last, which is that uh, free sparring is a, is a great opportunity for doing this kind of stuff if you do it well. And I'm going to do a separate video, I think, on getting the most out of free sparring, uh, which I'll probably do next. Um, but the short version is that most people, when they spar, they kind of get to the end of the class and they've got like half an hour to do it. And they're just like, oh, fuck it, I'm going to go on. I'm going to hit my friend. It's going to be fun, right? And they're not necessarily thinking about it. They, they tend to fall back on their greatest hits or they just do what they feel like. They might try and bust out what they did in class. Some do, some don't. Um, but you can definitely be a lot more proactive uh, in sort of how you approach your sparring in a way that really helps, particularly for identifying relative advantage. Um, the, the kind of things I like to do, uh, I like to work out what my opponent is best at. Um, so, so that's training the identifying it. What are they good at? What are they trying to do? And then what I like to do is I like to give them the situation where that thing comes up. Right, so I, I'm. This is a, if I was doing this at tournament, this would be stupid, right? I'm giving them the opportunity to do the thing that they're best at, um, and then w why am I doing that? Well, one reason I'm doing that is a the practice of working out what they're best at is useful for them. If I wanted a different thing to to avoid it, which is what I would do in a tournament, but also it means I can now practice uh, trying to defend against the thing that they're best at, right? Which is what I like to do in inspiring and other aspects too. Um, or you can uh, go into your sparring with a specific objective in mind, right? Rather than just go and say, I'm on the fence, however I feel like it, think, right, today, I really want to focus on grappling and finding opportunities to grapple. Or I really want to focus on, I'm not allowed to hit the hands, I'm only allowed to hit the head, right? That's my only option to it. So kind of self-restricting your sparring in a way that is useful to try and get you out of your comfort zone. All in all, really, doing this well requires uh, you know, three things I've talked about. Right? First of all, you've got to be able to read your opponent and say, what is it they're good at? What are they trying to do? Right? If you can't do that, the rest of it is pointless. So that's, that's one. So make sure you're doing that in sparring, at least. Um, point two is you need to be able to come up with a plan and execute it that isn't your normal comfort zone. Right? If you're just going into fencing and you're doing the same thing without thinking, you'll never be able to adapt in a way to do that. So even just practicing doing things out of your comfort zone is useful. And again, you can completely independent of your opponent, practice that in sparring, practice that in drills, try something new, new to you or something you're worse at and focus on that. But then with all of these things, it's the match of the two, which is, which is really uh, the, uh, the core of it, which is that, um, you know, obviously uh, it's one thing to uh, read and it's one thing to be able to adapt but you want to make this to be doing something different, but you want to make sure that something different is something that then corresponds to uh, the thing that is worse for the person that you've read correctly. Um, and a lot of the time, you're gonna to have to try multiple things, right? You might think, oh, okay, this isn't working for me. I'm gonna try something else. And you get to that point, like that's not working for me either. I'm gonna try something else, right? Uh, and hopefully you get to the right answer before you've lost a match in, the, in a tournament context. Um, as I say, in the next video, I'm going to talk more about the sparring aspects to that because I think there's a lot of pe things people can get out of sparring that they don't uh, because they just kind of go into it and thinking, and I think that's worth a video on its own. But thanks for watching, and I'll link the previous video in the comments below.